Hello, and welcome to the AES Training Academy. In this video, you will learn how to program an AES 7788F fire subscriber unit. To successfully complete the steps in this video, you will need a 7788F that is connected to AC power. It should also have a 7.5 ampere hour battery connected to it as well. You'll also need an AES 7041 handheld programmer. Begin by connecting the handheld programmer to the programmer port on the main subscriber board. Press the reset button next to the modular RJ jack. When successfully connected, the LCD on the programmer will display a flashing cursor in the upper left hand corner. Before you begin programming, it is important to note that programming will time out if actions are not taken within 65 seconds of a keypad entry. This will be indicated on the LCD display by a reading of Time Out. There will also be an audible beep from the handheld programmer. When a configuration change has been made and committed to memory, which is signified by the word OK being displayed on the handheld programmer, AES recommends that you press the reset button on the subscriber main board. Again, this is located next to the modular RJ jack on the main board. Setting the unit ID and cipher code. The first step in programming your 7788F will be to enter the unit ID number. This is the unique identifier that will be used by the subscriber when communicating. You can configure the unit ID by pressing the Control and F1 keys on the handheld programmer. At the prompt, enter the desired account ID. Please note, you must not have two subscribers on the same network using the same unit ID. The unit ID is limited to four characters and can be any combination from 0 to 9 and A through F. For example, 0A1F. Once you have entered the code, press the Enter key to continue. Next, you will be prompted to enter the cipher code. This is a unique code used by all subscribers and IP links on your network. Think of the cipher code as a password or a key for the network. This protects communications that take place over your AES and Telenet network. Once you have entered the cipher code, press the Enter key. The LCD screen will now display the word OK. Programming Timing Parameters In this section, you will learn how to program the various timing parameters of your 7788F. Press the Control and F2 keys on your handheld programmer. AES default check-in times are 23 hours and 45 minutes in order to satisfy UL requirements. We do not recommend that you alter these settings. However, if you choose to enter a new value, the first will be for hours. Use your keypad to enter the new hour value then press the Enter key. Valid values are 1 through 23. To enter a new value for minutes, use the keypad to enter the new minute value and press the Enter key. Next, you will have the opportunity to set reporting times for AC fails and restorals. The default is a random time between 0 and 60 minutes. You may enter in a new value between 0 and 60. To leave the timing set to random, simply press the Enter key. This is followed by the Report Delay Timing Parameter. This setting controls the number of seconds between report transmissions. The default is 10 seconds, and it is a recommended setting from AES. You may change this value to anywhere between 0 and 330 seconds. Following the Report Delay Timing Parameter will be the Communications Timeout. This is displayed on the handheld programmer as COM Timeout. The default is 61 seconds and should not be changed. Press the Enter key. The LCD will now display the word OK. This completes the timing parameter programming. Zone Programming The 7788F is capable of reporting up to 8 zones. The default setting for each of the zones is S for Supervised and must be changed to F for Fire Supervised. To permit for reporting of trouble conditions in a trouble message, fire zones must be enabled by selecting Y to the first prompt in the zone programming. 
Each zone can be programmed to report restoral to normal state. The default setting is X for no restorals. To begin programming, press Control and F3. Enter Y if you wish to enable zone trouble reporting. Otherwise, enter N to disable it. Press the Enter key to proceed. Now you will have the opportunity to enter a value for each of the eight zones. Acceptable values are B for bypassed, S for supervisory, and F for fire supervised. Note, each of the entries represents one zone in chronological order from zones 1 through 8. In this example, our first three zones, or zones 1 through 3, are being set to fire supervised, and zones 4 to 8 are set to bypass. To accept the entries, press the Enter key. Next, the option to select zones to report restorals is presented. Enter a value of R for Restore Reported and X for Restore Not Reported. To accept the entries, press the Enter key. Setting Modes There are a number of modes that can be set on the subscriber. These setting changes may be accessed by pressing Ctrl and F4. The first setting that can be changed is the repeating function. By default, repeating is set to Yes, which means the subscriber unit will relay messages from other subscribers to other points in the network. When this setting is off, the subscriber will not accept or relay messages to other subscribers. It will only pass out its own messages. To accept the current value of Y for Yes, press Enter. Otherwise, enter a new value and press Enter. Next is the option to suppress AC failure messages. The default setting is No and is the required setting for UL installations. To suppress AC failures, enter a Y and press Enter. Otherwise, just press Enter to accept the default value. You will now be presented with the option to suppress charger failure messages. This is also a default set to No and is a required setting for UL installations. To suppress AC failures, enter a Y and press Enter. Otherwise, press the Enter key to accept the default value. You will now be presented with the option to suppress ground fault messages. The default is also set to no and is required for UL installations. To suppress AC failures, enter a Y and press enter. Otherwise, just press enter to accept the default value. Local status check. This function performs a diagnostic check of the subscriber. Press shift and F4. The LCD will display the subscriber's current version number and the unit ID. The next line, indicated by RT1, will indicate the first unit in the subscriber's routing table. This is the unit the subscriber will communicate with first. This is known as the route or a path. A subscriber may build a routing table of up to eight distinct paths. On the same line is a reading for level. This is the number of hops a subscriber is away from an IP link. In this example, the subscriber is one hop away from an IP link. A111 is the IP link on this network. The fourth line begins with STAT. This will report any troubles that may be present on the subscriber. Refer to the AES Installation and Operation Manual for details on these codes. This is then followed by the NETCON reading. NETCON, also known as Network Connectivity, is a reference to the number of available communication paths a subscriber unit has. A netcon of 5 indicates at least two good paths. A netcon of 6 indicates at least one path. And a netcon of 7 indicates one or no available paths. Routing table. To access the subscriber unit's routing table, press F4. Here you will see the available communication paths for a particular subscriber of which there can be up to eight. The routes are all displayed in order from 1, which is the best possible path, to the 8th best possible path. After the route number, you will see the unit ID of the unit in that route. The next value, which begins with the letter L, is the link layer of that unit. Remember, each number defines the number of hops to an IP link. The next value, beginning with the letter N, is the netcon value of the unit the subscriber will communicate with. 
and finally, the value of Q, which represents signal quality. This is a measure of the RF communication channel. Acceptable values are 0, 01, 0, 02, or 0, 03. Monitoring transmitter functions. There may be times when it is necessary to monitor network traffic. While it may not be practical, it is possible to monitor network traffic using your handheld programmer. Please be aware, depending on the size of the network, data may flow too quickly to be read and legible on the LCD display. You may toggle network monitoring on and off. To toggle receive monitoring on, press Shift and F1. Press Shift and F1 again to turn it off. You can do the same with Transmit Monitor. Simply press Shift and F2. Do the same to turn it off. Or you can monitor all transmitter functions, both Receive and Transmit, by pressing Shift and F3. This too is a toggle feature. Keying the transmitter. There may be instances where, for testing purposes, you need to manually trigger the transmitter. An example of this would be to conduct testing using an SWR meter, or to measure radio performance, or to test cable connections. To facilitate this testing, you may manually trigger the subscriber transmitter. Simply press Shift and F5. The subscriber will now attempt to transmit for up to 6 seconds. Please use caution, as excessive use could damage the transceiver. Always confirm either an antenna or a load is connected to the transceiver before triggering it using the Shift F5 function. Reset to factory defaults. Resetting to factory defaults, also known as a RAM reset or reset RAM, will restore all factory default settings. The only settings that will be retained are the unit ID and the cipher code. It is good practice and an AES recommendation to reset a unit to factory defaults prior to any new installation. To perform a reset, Press Ctrl and F5. Enter a Y at the prompt, then press Enter. The subscriber will initiate a self-test when the unit has been reset. Visit our website for valuable fire marshal resources. Go to www.aes-corp.com, click on Resources, and then Fire Marshal Resources. This concludes our video on programming a 7788F fire subscriber unit. Please be sure to check us out on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Vimeo, and YouTube. Thank you for watching.